A vintage model traction engine restoration, part 9. Making steam valve adapter and playing with the pump. Strictly speaking though, I don't think playing is the right word. Throwing the stupid thing through the window would be more like it. More about that later. First of all, I need to make the steam valve extension for the steam feed to the injector. In this clip, I have a piece of hexagon bar in the chuck. First job, face across the front. This piece of hexagon bar is the same size as the hexagon bar used to make 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch union nuts. I'm turning the piece of bar parallel for part of its length. When it's fitted to the tap, the total length of this fitting needs to be 5 eighths of an inch. This part of the job I really don't need to do because it would work fine just by fitting the hexagon straight onto the steam tap. But it wouldn't look so good, so I'm doing it this way. After I've turned a part of the hexagon bar down, I then used the centre drill to make a hole in the end of it, and then I drilled it to tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch. I made sure not to drill the tapping size hole too deep, just long enough to allow me to screw the adapter onto the steam tap. Now it's time to part off the component. I'm using my ruler, and as you can see, 5 eighths of an inch, or one and a half human centipedes, is the length. With a freshly sharpened parting tool, the brass parts off quite easily, and in no time at all drops into the chip tray, which I keep a lot clearer these days. There was a time when it would take a long time for me to find the parts that I'd made. What I'm doing here is holding the fitting by the hexagon part, because now I need to thread the end 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. I needed to machine the other end, so I turned the part round in the chuck, but I didn't hold it by the threads. I screwed the fitting into a 5 sixteenths by 32 union nut, and this was clamped in the chuck. I'm not going overboard polishing this part up, it will look better when it's tarnished and matches the rest of the engine. The first thing to do is to apply some Loctite 542 to the thread, and then simply screw it in place. I'm also using a union nut to protect the thread of the elbow as I screw it into the water tank, once again using some Loctite 542 to seal it. And here it is in its finished position and I've removed the union nut. I'd like to say something. Recently I've been getting some really weird comments from viewers, generally having a go at me for not doing enough machining and showing other aspects of model making. The comment said that the channel has drifted from engineering to aesthetics. More about pretty paint jobs than valve timing and sleeve boring. I'll reply to the valve timing comment first. If you watch my series Model Engineering for Beginners, there's lots of things about valve timing in the one series. And as to sleeve boring, well, it is in fact that very boring. It is to me anyway. Watching it once is fine, but watching it many, many times over and over again, I think I'd be tempted to jump off a high public building. There are so many engineering videos out on YouTube, I suggest that this viewer watches a few of those. I try and cover a slightly broader aspect. For instance, here I'm touching in the paintwork around this fitting. I marked it slightly and it was already marked before I got my hands on it, so now it's time to touch in the paintwork and I'm using dark green hammerite from Halfords, which seems to be a very good match for the paint that's on the engine. Same as on my 5 inch gauge Lion model locomotive. Talking about jumping off high public buildings, this is the water pump. From first seeing this soft soldered pump, I knew it was going to be problematic, and I was right. This is the ball valve, I've removed it to refit it with some Loctite 542. I fixed the ramp part of the pump, that seals perfectly and pumps very well indeed. I tested it a couple of episodes back, and I did notice at that time that the pump was leaking. The water was leaking from the ball valve plug and from the pipe flange where it mounts onto the pump body, even though it has a gasket and also, as usual, from the drain cock. This small drain cock is just used to bleed the system of air, if ever you run out of water in the tank. It's time for a test. I'm now filling the water tank that I've refitted into the bunker full of water. I've connected the air line, so it's time to turn on the compressed air. Note to self, before applying the compressed air, it's a really good idea to refit and seal the union nut that fastens the siphon to the turret. And now, with everything sealed, it's time to test the pump. Mm. 
Well, at least the engine's running well. This pump needs some attention. The pump leaks really badly when you shut off the bypass valve. When you open it to let the water back to the tank, it's not quite as bad. Here you can clearly see what happens when I open and shut the bypass valve. The question is what to do about this. There are two options open to me. One of them is to give the owner a small bucket to hang under the pump. I'll fix the leaks. I have a plan. First of all though, I'm just going to make a new gasket and see what happens. It's extremely difficult to tighten these nuts, particularly this one, which is quite inaccessible. And plus the studs are only 6BA, which are very, very small. And it's quite difficult to get enough pressure to hold the flange securely against the body of the pump. Once I'd removed the nuts, it was very easy to remove the flange from the pump. Time now for some mild ultraviolence. Using my really brutal Barco pipe wrench, I'm removing these small studs. What I propose to do is fit another gasket and then use screws to allow me to put a bit more pressure on the flange itself. Also, I'm temporarily removing this small drain cock because that also leaks very badly. Removing this top stud took quite a long time because I couldn't move the wrench very much. But eventually, it did part company with the block. What I'm doing here is using my ink pad to put some ink on the end of the flange. Then I just pressed the gasket material onto the flange and made a new gasket. Then I refitted the flange complete with the new gasket to the block. I even used some gasket sealant on the gasket and guess what? It still leaked. I didn't show the retest because it was identical to the first test. I've taken the pump off the engine altogether to work on it as a separate unit. The annoying thing is I could make a new pump, but then it's not a sympathetic restoration, so I'm going to attempt to make this work. Plan A was to tap the hole in the centre and make a proper union for it, but I abandoned that idea. Instead I put the parts in a box and I will revisit this very shortly. And in the meantime, if you're worried about not seeing enough boring or valve timing features, please watch Model Engineering for Beginners and maybe a few more of the 1500 plus videos that I have on the channel. Yes, over 1500 videos to look at. Videos featuring boring and turning, threading, drilling, milling, setting the valve timing on numerous steam engines, oh yes, and painting. And that's it for this episode. I'd just like to say stay safe and well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.